Hey guys, Jonathan with jwallphotography.com and today we are unboxing the Rokinon 135 F2. So here we are getting ready to open this box that I've never opened before in my life. It's never been opened, so we're gonna see together what's in it for the first time together. Okay, so I might have opened it prior to this, but just because it was, it's like Christmas. I just can't leave it in there. So in the box, we got some Adorama bubbles. Awesome. We got this. We got stuff with my address on there. If you look at that, you better send me some cool stuff. So we've got the box. This is the Rokinon 135 F2 full frame lens. I got the Nikon mount, decided I wanna use it on that camera. I'm gonna be going over some very, 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 not so very, some very specific details of this lens, why I chose it, what I would use it for, and what I wouldn't use it for. But first, let's unbox this bad boy and see what it looks like and feels like. So, let's see. Hey, hey, hey. We appreciate your business, eh? Cool. Got some foam on top. Oh, you hear that? Angels. Got a little baggy holder thing to hold it in. Got some stuff I'll never look at. Certificate of quality from working on themselves. And that's, that's all that's in the box. We'll put you back in there, foam. Okay. Let's go ahead and take it out of here. How many of you out there hate me for setting it on the front just now? Okay, got some instructions. Doesn't seem to be anything too awesome. I'm gonna frame this and put it up on my wall. Okay. So first off, the thing I noticed, this is actually a pretty heavy lens. Um, I'm, I'm just going off of basic feels and stuff like that, then we're gonna get down to some specifics. This is a Rokinon, meaning it is a fully manual lens. There's no um, autofocus in there at all, so it's not gonna focus automatically with any camera that you have, um, regardless whether it's got internal focus motor or not. The lens cap feels good on there. It's got the nice little springy sides instead of like the weird screw off ones. Nice big glass, 77 millimeter. It's the same size of, as my 70 to 200, so my filters will fit on there. So that's nice, and it does have a detachable lens hood, which is nice, because my other Rokinon lens, I broke it, and I'm stuck with it, unless I get another Rokinon, the 14 millimeter one that I have. So yeah, overall, that's not a big lens either. Um, for 135 f2, you know, you might think it's gonna be a little bit bigger, but that's actually a pretty, pretty nice size. I'm gonna look at it. Aperture ring, easy to move around. On this, you'll just leave it at f22, and then your camera will do the rest of the work. If you need to do video or something like that, you can just by moving that, but let your camera do the work for that side. It does have, let's see, pretty smooth focus ring. It's a uh, it's really wide focus ring. So what you'll notice on this, opposed to some of the other lenses, is because this one is intended to be full manual focus, air, there's a lot more space between the focus points. So you can pinpoint precision, the focus on that. And it does have the chip built into it that will tell my camera, hey, you're in focus. And it seems to be pretty accurate. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna drop some truth on you. I had one of these before and I broke it. I know I'm, I'm a terrible person, but I dropped it on the front element right here without a filter on it and just shattered it. It wasn't a little fall, it was a very, I'm, I'm ashamed to admit fall. But luckily I got hooked up with another one, uh, thanks to my loving wife. I got hooked up with another one that uh, I can look at and use. I, I literally gotta take about 10 pictures with my last one before I decided to be stupid with it. So. We've got this, let's talk about some specifics of this. And because being dyslexic, I struggle, struggle with numbers and speaking apparently bad enough, I've got them written down here. Okay, so this is the Nikon mount version, but there's actually eight total mounts 
that this is available in. It comes in the Canon, the Sony E, Fuji X, the Nikon one that I have, Samsung NX, Pentax K, uh, Sony A, and the Micro Four Thirds. Now, the lenses themselves are all roughly the same size, but you actually, the Micro Four Thirds one is actually a little bit bigger than this one, so all the dimensions are not identical. Um, I know that's not a big deal to a lot of people, but to some people, they have cases that they need to fit in, so go to rokanon.com and see if that is important to you. Okay, so we're gonna go over some of the, just the performance specs of this. It's 135 millimeter focal distance made for a full frame camera. That doesn't mean it won't work on your crop sensor, that just means it's gonna be a 202 millimeter lens equivalent on your crop sensor camera. So it will work on those, it's just gonna have a longer focal reach due to the crop factor. Um, it goes from F2 all the way up to F22 and it's got a minimum focus distance of 2.6 feet. So, about there, eh? eh? I'm not Canadian, I don't know why I say that, that's stupid. I started saying it as a joke and now I can't stop saying it. <sighs> stupid stuff kids do. Okay, um, a little bit more about the performance side of it. The degree, the angle that you come out or the angle that's visible on this is 18.8 degrees. Unless you're in crop mode, then it's 12.2, 12.4 in the crop mode. Now let's talk a little bit about the insides of this. This, is, this uh, lens has 11 elements in seven different groups, nine rounded diaphragm blades, and that's what give you the circular aperture, and boy does it make some beautiful bokeh. And since I didn't, I did. I took this, this lens out today and shot a photo of my son and this is what that looks like. He, he was not happy about me taking the photo, but the photo itself looks good. So you're gonna get that awesome bokeh on that. Um, again, going back to it, it has no autofocus feature, so there's not a camera out there that it's gonna have the autofocus on. You're gonna have to manually focus that. Is that a deal breaker for you? It shouldn't be. It's got the chip inside of it that says it's in focus. Depends on what you're shooting, I guess. But anyway, having that that focus confirmation is wonderful. It seems to be pretty accurate. Um, I've been using it, again, I probably took 50 shots off of it just to test it out and play with my light. Um, it seems to be pretty accurate and I like it a lot at F2. It's extremely shallow depth of field, so it's a little tough to get anything in focus at F2. Um, not tough, just take some practice. Uh, after about 10 shots, I was nailing it every time. So again, we're gonna go to the build side of it, 77 millimeter thread on here. This lens specifically is 3.2 inches in diameter and four and a half, 4.7 inches long. Um, the weight of this one is just under two pounds at 28.75 ounces or 815 grams. And now the cool part. The reason I got this lens, again, keep taking that off is the glass and I'm gonna I'm gonna read my notes here to make sure I don't say it wrong or incorrectly so it has what's called extra low dispersion in the element what that does is makes it have low chromatic aberration which I can attest to after shooting it in high contrast situations today it also makes it very sharp and has accurate colors whenever you take the image it also has, um, on all of the glass, ultra multi-coated glass. So that helps out with those as well. That's very hard to say, just so you know, Rokinon, or uh, I just can't say it well. Um, kind of moving into, uh, you know, who's gonna use this lens? What's it good for? What's it not good for? This lens is good for portrait photography, where you want a shallow depth of field any photography for slower stuff, slower moving stuff, um, so still life, stuff like that where you need a shallow depth of field. You wanna take pictures of flowers, you wanna take pictures of your still kid, like mine is kinda of still, he listens, he doesn't like it, but he does listen. Um, perhaps you got a model or something like that and you're wanting to get that really shallow depth of field or anything that's not gonna be moving too quick. The reason I say that is because being manual focus, you gotta be quick to get something moving fast. I'm never gonna take this lens into the pit with me to shoot concert photography. That would be 
terrible. That would be really, really tough. I might try it just to see how tough it is, but I think the manual focus on that would make that pretty much unusable if it was anybody moving around at all. Um, it's not good, so kind of segueing into uh, what I've kind of, kind of already hinted at, it's not gonna be good for fast movement, concert photography, You're, you don't wanna take this to the skate park to try to catch you know, your kids skateboarding. Uh, and you probably don't wanna take this thing out and try to catch pictures of birds flying really fast. Now if you got a couple birds in your yard that are just chilling, yeah, it'd work great for that. It's got, a, it's got a pretty good reach and it's got a really, really, really shallow depth of field so the images will look awesome if you can get the focus right. Now, don't let that super shallow depth of field and the focus scare you from not trying this lens. It does take a little getting used to, but once you get used to it, you're gonna love the images that it produces. And what's neat about this lens, opposed to some of the others that even have this same exact one, it's a thousand plus dollars cheaper. This lens ranges right now anywhere from $399 for the Nikon version, all the way up to 549 for the Canon version. And everything in between that, they're kind of random prices. I don't know, I don't set the prices, that's where they're at. Uh, there's a link in the description for all of them. At the time of making these videos, that's what, or this video, that's what the price is. So, why would you want this lens? The Bokeh. The bokeh on it is absolutely amazing. Why, why do you put up with the, the hassle of having to autofocus it? Why do you put up with the hassle of you know running around with a 135 prime? And it's because that beautiful bokeh will set your images apart from a lot of other people's images. And you can do it without breaking the bank. This thing's about $100 more than the 50 millimeter 1.8. And it's gonna deliver a the, the better compression because of the longer focal length. And uh, it's gonna deliver better images on that. Add this to your bag if you're running into not getting the compression you want with the 50 millimeter 1.8. Add this to your bag if you're wanting to get a shallower depth of field. Add this to your bag if you're looking for something with that range that is a prime lens. Don't add this to your bag just because you want another cool piece of glass. I really hope you've enjoyed this unboxing for the very first time. I've never opened it before in my life ever unboxing. But if you like this, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell button so you get notifications whenever I come out with new stuff. I will be comparing this lens to the new 135-18 Sigma lens to see if the thousand dollar difference is worth it or not. Who knows? Thanks for watching and have a good one.